All right, we are moving into chapter 13 in our, in, uh, in, uh, in our ongoing walk through the book of Romans. Uh, this, you know, I always say this, but this is pretty practical stuff, chapter 13, as to me a lot of chapter 12 was. I don't know how that will manifest itself during the course of the, the teaching, but I'm looking forward to chapter 14. But I don't want to rush through 13 trying to get to 14. Uh, but we are nearing the end of this study. We've only got a few more chapters to go and we'll be done. And uh, it has been good. Boy, I want to tell you, this has been one phenomenal Bible study. Uh, and there, I'm going to tell you, as we go into this study tonight, there are two major things you have to bear in mind as you read chapter 13. One is, you hear me harping on this all the time, context. Oh. Mm -hmm. Remember the conditions that the Jewish people were living under at the time Paul wrote this. Mm -hmm. Rome had colonized Palestine, or Israel as we know it today. And they were under the dictatorial uh, leadership of Rome. They had no say in the loss of the land. They had no say in how things were run and how things were done. Bear that in mind as we read this. And then bear in mind also what I've been talking about the last couple of Sundays. And that is how spiritual principles, Christian principles, oftentimes are in direct contradiction to human nature. What God asks us to do is completely the opposite of what we'd like to do as a human being. You know, you get punched, you want to punch back. You know, that's the human response. And yet God has called us to a higher place and a higher level of behavior and conduct. So bear those two factors in mind. Context and the concept of godly principles being in direct contradiction to human nature as we study. And I'll point it out to you as we go. So tonight we begin chapter 13. And Paul writes, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. God. I'm going to stop. We're going to do this one verse by verse if I have to. Man, that said a lot. Now, I, said, I said this is pretty mundane, but I don't know what I was reading earlier today. Paul starts out saying, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. If you're a born-again believer and you genuinely believe the Word of God and you have the faith that you ought to have, then you understand today nobody is in power but that God wants them there. Amen. Uh -huh. We've yeah. got these foolish people in the Christian world today, the fundamentalists, the religious right, who want to gripe and argue, they have all kinds of negative things to say about Mr. Obama being president, and they want to complain and gripe. Well, I've got news for you. According to what Paul said in the first verse of chapter 13, Mr. Obama is in office because God wants Mr. Obama Amen. to be in office. Amen. If God did not want him there, he would Amen. not be there. Amen. That's right. Amen. My Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. I believe it. It also means, my friend, that if the system of government we have in this country does its job and establishes laws, that we are to accept those laws, not to fight against them, yes. not to rail against them. Right. We've got politicians in, in uh, the world today who are calling for states to simply refuse to obey the law if the Supreme Court, for instance, should pass uh, gay marriage, you know, across the nation. Right, yeah. Got news for you, my friends. Right. There is no biblical support right. for that carnal 
mentality. Right. No. You are carnal. You are worldly. You are ungodly. You are unholy. You are contradictory Amen. to the Word of God. Amen. That's right. Right. We may not like everything that comes down the pike, but we must accept it as good citizens. That is the mandate of the Word of God. Amen. Remember what I said about Spiritual principles oftentimes going in com complete contradiction to human nature. Yes, amen. Human nature wants to fight it. Human nature wants to rail against it. Right. Now, also remember what I said about the, uh, the fact that uh, context. Right. Look at the conditions Paul was living under when he wrote yes. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was literally saying... Caesar currently, presently, reigns over Palestine by God's design. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. wow. Yeah. He was saying Palestine is ruled by the Romans by reason of divine design. Mm -hmm. Am I telling the truth? Right. That is what was going on in his world. That's what was happening at his time. And yet, even with all that going on, you don't hear Paul talking right. about rebellion. That's you don't right. hear Paul right. talking about civil war. You don't hear Paul talking right. about uh, standing in opposition to the... Listen, Rome had a reputation a mile long as being one of the most un godly, heathenistic, uh, immoral societies on the face of planet Earth. Remember what Paul told us in yeah. Romans 1? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yep. right. That's right. Rome had a horrible reputation. Uh -huh. yeah. And yet he's saying, let every man be subject unto the higher powers. Because mm -hmm. ain't no higher power there except God put him there. Hello now. Yes, uh -huh. So even... Right. Though Paul was in a circumstance that he could easily have railed against Brother Richard, yep. he didn't. That's right. He said, no, let me tell you what the Holy Ghost has put in my spirit. If they're there, they're there because God put That's them right. there. For his yes. Yes. There was never one time, listen to me children tonight, <laughs> there was never one time that Israel was dominated or taken over or taken captive by another nation except that God himself had called for or allowed that to happen. That's right. That's true. That's right. That's true. See, I'm telling you, the church world today gives more credit to the enemy yes, they for did. the work of God. That's right. Every time something comes down the pike that we don't like, we blame it on the devil. Yeah. Amen. Oh, I'll tell you, it. Satan is really at work. That, that old Obama got elected baloney. That's right. Amen. Baloney. That's right. Baloney. Let me tell you, the Word of God tells us that God set up Pharaoh. That's right. So that when Moses went before yeah. Pharaoh and demanded yes, that the people of Israel, the Jewish people, be set free, that he would stand in opposition to them on purpose. That's right. Yes, yes. God wanted a Pharaoh who opposed their liberation. That's right. Now, if God had wanted to, he could easily have caused a Pharaoh to be sitting who would have said, okay, go. You need any money? You want us to pack your lunches? Could you use a couple of camels? But he didn't. That's right. He, uh, he caused a pharaoh to be sitting in power at that hour who was going to oppose vehemently the release of the Jewish people right. and the Jewish uh, and the God of the Jewish people then was able to embarrass and humiliate every God of Egypt That's right. mm -hmm. one after another after another That's by right. reason of the plagues each yes. of those oh, plagues yes. my friend was an embarrassment yes to one of the deities of Egypt. That's right. Each and every one of them. 
They worshiped the Nile God, so God turned the Nile into blood, as it were. That's right. That's right. Amen. They had a God who was identified by the fly. So God said, okay, you want flies? Here are some flies. <laughs> right. Every single deity. And God was able to show himself supreme right. over every deity of Egypt, one after another, right. after another, after another, by reason of having a Pharaoh in place. Yeah. See, people, Christian people in the world today are so small-minded, it, it just sickens me. I mean, their brain's the size of a pea. And they think that they've got God all figured out. Oh, Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you, whether I, I'm, not, I'm not even going to stand up here and say today I'm Mr. Obama's biggest fan in the universe as far as politics go. I'm not going to say that. But I'm going to tell you a little secret. I felt in my spirit, and I've said it from this pulpit, so you've heard me say it before. Yeah. I felt in my spirit that whatever comes, and there's more coming, yes, there is. whatever comes, yes. God wanted it to come. Amen. Whatever happens, God wanted it to happen. Right. That is why I have not opposed Mr. Obama one minute because Brother uh, Martin, when I'm praying about voting and all that, I'm asking for the mind of God because the mind of right. God Amen. and the mind of most Christians are not one and the same. Oh, that's, that's right. Not. Amen. No. That's right. Goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think God may want the most unholy, ungodly, wicked, evil man you ever saw in your life in power at a given moment and a given time. Right. Because he's got something working that is so much bigger than anything you can wrap your little mousy mind around. And if you think you can figure God out and you can figure out the direction God's taking, you're out of your tree. That's right. That's right. And by the way, historically, I'm going to answer this. I feel like the Holy Ghost told me there's somebody out there who is saying, well, there's questions as to whether or not the Jewish people were really ever captive in Egypt to begin with. There's questions about that because there's not a lot of uh, historical evidence. There's not a lot of archaeological evidence. Let me tell you something. After the beating the Jews took, mm -hmm. I mean the, the Egyptians took, Sweetheart, they used to erase from memory right. their own pharaohs. That's mm -hmm. right, amen. That's right. That's right. If there was a pharaoh they didn't like, yeah. they would go through and they would knock down every statue of him. They That's would right. take every mention of his name out of every hieroglyphic. They would burn every book that That's mentioned right. his name. And, and this is a well-known fact. The Egyptians used to love to do this. When they didn't like somebody, they buried you so that there was no mention of you in history, couldn't even find you. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So if you think after what the Word of God describes to us in the book of Exodus, if you think the Egyptians are going to leave all kinds of evidence to get in a whooping the way they got a whooping in the book of Exodus, you're out of your tree. That's right. You're out of your tree. They're not about to leave any evidence of all that. That's no, right. sir, but Boy, we took a Lincoln. Uh-huh. And they're just going to broadcast that. No, they didn't sure. do that in those right. days. I guarantee you that as soon as the Egyptian armies were swallowed up by the Red Sea, that Pharaoh was immediately saying, okay, folks, I want every mention of Jews in Egypt erased from our history. That's right. I want everything that even begins to point to their living here and being part of our society yeah. wiped out. <clears throat> so don't think for a minute that it cannot be historical fact. There are many societies and the Jewish society. Listen, all you got to do is watch the History Channel and you'll find out what I'm telling you is true. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are certain pharaohs that they barely know even existed. That's right. Yeah. And they cannot for the life of them find one mention of yeah. that. The man sat in power for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. And they can't find mention of him anywhere because he did things that the 
Egyptian society didn't like. So when he died, they just went through with an eraser and blah, 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 just tried to, tried to obliterate every mention of him. Amen. So, you know, these are things that have happened over the course of history. So Paul said, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Folks, you can't say that any clearer. That's right. I'm going to tell you, I'd rather be a Christian who believes the Bible than be one of these knuckleheads who run around screaming and hollering, look what Satan's doing, look what Satan's doing. Because if you're a Christian who believes the Bible, then you believe that in every circumstance and in every situation, God is in control. He had not lost control for one second. No matter who's elected, no matter who's in power, no matter who the king is, no matter what's going on, we believe if we believe the Bible that God has ordained it and it is so because God wants it so. Now I don't know about you, but I get a lot more comfort from that fact than sitting around thinking, look what the devil's doing, look what the devil's doing. Jimmy Carter got elected president. And there were Christians in this country running around. Oh, hallelujah, boy. God really won a victory. We got a born-again believer in the White House. Right. Got news for you, just same knuckleheads that voted for him. And we're so thrilled to death with him. I like Jimmy Carter. I think he's a terrific human being. Jimmy Carter's pro-gay. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Carter supports gay marriage. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Half of the stuff you claim to believe in, he don't believe in. Half right. the stuff you don't claim to believe, he believes. Yeah. Half the stuff you don't support, he supports. Half the stuff you do support, he don't support. Right. Isn't it funny how you think you know everything? Yeah. Isn't it and poor Mr. Carter was so swamped. By the responsibilities of Washington, he didn't know what to do with himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If ever there was a president, bless his heart, who was just totally overtaken by the presidency, it was poor Jimmy Carter. Mm -hmm. He was a marvelous statesman. Now you talk about somebody who could work miracles when it came to international affairs. Mm -hmm. That man could work some miracles. Mm -hmm. He brought some truces between nations that stand to this day, like between Israel and Egypt. Israel. Okay, the Camp David treaties. Yeah. I mean, this man did some incredible things yeah. in, in terms of international, but when it comes to our local economy, when it comes to right here at home, yeah. all hell was to lose. <laughs> I'm telling you, Angel's yeah. the youngest kid in the room tonight. Yeah. And poor Angel, he don't know none of this. He don't remember. You can only buy gas on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Right. If you had an odd number at the back of your license plate. Yes. And you can only get it on Monday, uh, Thursday, and Friday, or however they did it. I can't even think of how you do it now. But anyway, you can only do it on the other alternating days if you had the even number at the end of your license plate. See, we went through that under Jimmy Carter. We went through that under Jimmy Carter. We had a terrible, a terrible situation with our economy. We wound up with, with uh, people being taken hostage in Iran. American citizens being taken hostage in Iran. And for more than a year, our country was held hostage. That's right. They had a hundred or so people. American people were so humiliated. Uh -huh. We were so demoralized. You remember that, don't yes, you, Martin? I, I mean, yes. when you've got Americans being held hostage in a foreign country, yeah. and poor Jimmy Carter tried to send in a <clears throat> rescue operation, and it failed. One of the helicopters blew up and yeah. hit the ground, and it just turned into a big embarrassment. Right. I mean, and the American people were so demoralized that people literally were ashamed to hang an American flag on their front porch anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. You remember the yellow ribbons we used yeah. to tie oh, around yes, the trees? Right, that's right. The yellow ribbons. 
They'd tie yellow ribbons around a tree in the front yard, and that was for the hostages. We, we, we're going to tie a ribbon around the tree in honor of our hostages until they come home. And then, you know, I know a lot of people in the LGBT community, oh, they just rail against Ronald Reagan. The powers that be are ordained of God. Yeah, they are. Like it or lump it. The powers that be are ordained of God. And honey, they're all going to be human. They ain't going to be one of them that walks on water. There's not going to be a one of them right. that can perform miracles except the Antichrist. Yes, amen. All right? So you're going to have humans in office no matter how you slice it. Right? Ronald Reagan gets elected president. He puts his hand on the Bible and he's being sworn in. And sweetheart, while he's being sworn in... Iran is putting those hostages on an airplane and sending them to Germany so they can make their way home. Because they knew, uh-oh, changing game plan, this sucker will blow us off the map. That's right. This guy won't think nothing. He'll kill all 40 of the hostages, but that's all right. He'll get all of us, too. And they knew yep. that there was a change in policy. There was a change in thinking in the leadership. And it was time to let them people go. That's right. See, we could get away with it when poor Mr. Carter was in office. But oh. now that Ronald Reagan, the actor turned president, has become president, right. we better approach things right. a little different. Yep. Yep. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know a president in this country that hasn't done some good. Yeah. They've all done some good. You know, they, they've all accomplished something. May not be that there are as many, that's not yours, right? No. Okay. May not be they've accomplished as much. You know, we went through, uh, we went through Bill Clinton and there were so many embarrassing and humiliating things that went on while Bill Clinton was in office. Yeah. And all people oh, just Lord. screaming yeah. and hollering. Right. But you know what? I'm going to tell you, for all the man's warts, he was probably one of the best presidents we've had in the last 40 years. I'm going to tell you right now. You want to talk about somebody who got some things done? And he was no dummy. I'll tell you, I, I get a chuckle out of Bill Clinton. He did things the Republicans were wanting to do, but he was able to kind of pare it back and rein it in a little bit. And then he took credit for it. <laughs> and it was the Republicans that were trying to do it all along. But I'm telling you, now that's a politician. That's somebody who knows what he's doing. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whatever is happening at that moment in time is happening because God wants it to happen. I got yeah. news for you. When gay marriage gets approved, when yeah. gay marriage becomes the law of the land across the entire nation, it will be because that is what God wants to happen right. at Amen. this hour and this time, That's right. whether you like it or not. That's Amen. Right. You may not understand what God is doing or why God is doing it, but that does not mean it is not God doing it. That's right. right. Amen. My Lord have mercy. Verse 2. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they Amen. that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Oh my gosh. Mm. Well, I'm telling you, it never ceases to amaze me. How the religious right in this country thinks that it can act the way it acts and it will not see any negative repercussions for their conduct. Paul says plainly, you resist the powers that be. You resist the powers that God has set up for whatever reason. You may not understand any of what God's doing or why he's doing it. But when you resist it, when you try to work against it, you know, I see more right wing kooks putting the craziest stuff on Facebook. Oh yeah. We had these people come to a singing here Saturday night. I was talking to them before the singing and I'm sure I just thrilled the fire out of them with some of the stuff I had to say. 
And I said, you know, and I mean, y'all know me. I'm pretty plain spoken. It's awful hard for me to water things down very well. It's not in my nature. And I said, I'm going to tell you, I don't understand evangelical right-wing folk. I said, I'm going to tell you, uh, the first words come off their lips are, how about that Obama? <laughs> first thing they have to say, Martin, is something about politics, something about world events. I said, I'm sorry, I come from the old school. I believe Amen. in saying, how about that Jesus? Amen. Isn't Amen. Jesus my Lord wonderful, Amen. wonderful? Yes. Isn't Amen. he wonderful? Right. Isn't knowing God uh, wonderful? Yes. Isn't serving Amen. the Lord wonderful? It don't matter if Obama's in. It don't matter if Clinton's in. It don't matter if Reagan's in. Jesus is wonderful. Yes. Hallelujah to God. It's still yes. a glorious thing to know God in yes. truth. Yes. Right. My Lord, but we yes, got so-called Christian people. First words off their lips. I've said it, I don't know how many times. I can tell what church you go to by how, how you talk in the first three minutes I meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Saw a little old lady at a gas station. Oh, it's probably been over a year ago now. And bless her heart, she's looking at the gas pump, scratching her head. She don't know what to do. She don't know how to do it. It's, it's obvious she probably never pumped her own gas in her life. I don't, she must not have gone very far in the last few years. Because <laughs> nowadays you got to pump your own gas. See, again, this little boy over here, he don't remember the days when somebody come to your window of the car and said, how much would you like? Oh, put in $20, please. And $20 would fill the tank, honey, and you'd drive on it for the next month. That's right. He don't remember all that. He doesn't know what a full service gas station is. When he was born, that self service was what it was. That's right. Yep. I'm going to tell you, folks. This little lady standing there, you know, trying to figure out how to do the gas. So I bless and bless her heart. I walked over to her. I said, "Ma'am, can I help you with this?" <laughs> And she said, well, I just don't, I just don't know what to do. I don't know how you're supposed to do this and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, now, you know, you put your card in here. Blah, blah. And I said, if you'll trust me, I'll help you. Because nowadays, you know, you're afraid to hand your credit card to anybody. Or <laughs> and I said, if you'll trust me, I'll help you. I said, I pastor a little church over here in Dallas. I said, so, you know, I'm trying to let her know I'm a Christian. I'm a pastor. You can trust me, although that don't mean a whole lot. Some pastors be the first one to mug you. Amen. <laughs> So I turned around and I, you know, if you'll trust me, she said, oh, praise the Lord, what a God sent. Amen. You know, and so then I, I go to do the cart. Well, don't you know it don't work? And I got to go into the, to the station. Oh, Lord. I said, ma'am, I'm going to have to take the cart into the station and leave it with him and go back and get it. I said, do you trust me to do that? Is that right? Oh, yeah, okay. So I go in the station. I give the guy her cart. I come back out. I start pumping the gas. And the conversation begins. Isn't it awful about that Obama? Oh, <laughs> I looked at her and I said, You did tell me you go to church in town, didn't you? <laughs> uh huh. I said, Which assemblies of God is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, how'd you ever know I go to first assembly? <laughs> How did I ever know? <laughs> yeah. How did I ever know? Tell you how I know. Because without fail, fundamentalist folk, especially Assemblies of God, I grew up in the Assemblies of God. You ain't never met an organization in your life that spends more time thinking and worrying about politics than the Assemblies of God does. And there's going to be people on the internet having a fit. Hi, it's all on you. I don't enable comments on our videos. So you just be burning and won't be able to tell nobody nothing. Oh boy. But that's what they do. They get all caught up in politics and world events. First words off their mouth, as sure as I'm shooting, is going to have something to do with what's in the news or who's in office. Sure as I'm alive. I hope to God that's never my testimony. That's 
Right. I hope to God when people talk to me, the first thing they hear me say is, Oh, isn't God good? Amen. Yes. I'll tell you, oh, I'm blessed. Amen. God's been good to me. I'm going to tell you, I've told, I've told more people the testimony of the miracle God gave me in 2000 yeah. than I know what to do with it. Tommy's had to sit there and listen to me tell all kinds of people that story. Well, I'm sorry, Tommy, you may not like it, but I could be sitting there railing against who's in office like so many so-called Christians mm -hmm. do. But rather than do that, I'm interested in lifting up the name of Jesus. Yes. Right. I'm interested in giving God praise. I'm interested in giving right. God glory. I'm interested in expressing thanksgiving for how good he's been to me. Mm -hmm. So I don't do things quite the same way some others do. Amen. The powers that be are ordained of God, whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. Tell you, Christian people ought to be able to accept what is with absolute confidence and knowledge that God is in control. Well, this one got elected. Well, I tell you, I'm sure scared to death if that one gets elected. If I hear one more Christian say that, I'm going to spit. <laughs> I don't know what will happen to this country if this one gets elected. Well, I'll tell you what will happen. Exactly what God wants to happen. That's, That's right. what will happen. That's right. That's what will happen. My right. Lord have mercy. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation, Brother Jack. There are negative repercussions to going against God's way of doing things. Do not kid yourself. That's right. I have prophesied from this pulpit in the course of preaching how many times I've said, folks, I'm going to tell you right now, the religious right has spent so much of its time trying to work against the powers that be, trying to exercise its influence. I'm too old to bend. <laughs> trying to exercise its influence in politics and in government. They're working in direct contradiction to what the Word of God teaches. They are not understanding nor accepting the fact that the powers that be are ordained of God. And they are working against those powers. Mm -hmm. And there will be damnation. Don't kid yourself. Mm -hmm. I've said it before, I'll say it again. The oppressor is very soon to become the oppressed. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. going to be terrible, terrible religious persecution in this country. And it's coming sooner than later, I promise you. It's already starting to. It's, it's coming. <laughs> it's going to be full blast before too long. And I'm going to tell you a little secret. It is not because the church has been doing right. Right. But because the church has been doing wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, you brought it upon yourself. Yeah. If you would have heard what Paul said in Romans 13, if you would have understand things and approach things the way Paul said in the 13th chapter of the book of Romans, then guess what? The things that are coming would not be coming. Mm -hmm. But because you have worked against consistently the powers that be everybody and anybody that don't suit you you have gone out of your way to oppose am I telling the truth yeah. mm -hmm. well my Bible said they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation mm -hmm. that's right don't think you're going to escape the repercussions of your behavior and your conduct. It will not happen. Verse 3, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Now this is funny, because I know how this is commonly interpreted. I know how this is commonly applied. But Paul is basically saying, no matter what ruler you've got, whether you're under a dictator, doesn't matter if you're in Fidel Castro's Cuba, mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you're in uh, Russia, 
Doesn't matter if you're in the U.S. If you do things the way the Word of God does things, then the powers that be are not going to trouble you. You hear what I'm telling you? He's keep it in context. You remember how I constantly am talking about keep it in context? Mm -hmm. Keep it in context. He says, for rulers are not a terror to good works. In other words, they don't trouble those who do right, but those who do wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, part of doing wrong is standing in opposition to the powers that be. Because Paul just told us that was wrong. And he told us that that brings damnation upon ourselves. And he said, now if you do things right, what does the word of God tell us to do for our leaders? Pray for them. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. How many evangelical, how many fundamentalist churches have called prayer meetings and said, let's hold up Mr. Obama in prayer? Yeah. How many of them, brother, pray for him in their church services instead of praying against him? That's right. Hello now. That's right. I'm going to tell you, folks, if you do things the way God tells you to do things, the Lord says, I promise you, then the powers that be will not trouble you. They're not going to bother you. You can be under one of the worst dictators in the world. And as long as you're not working and acting in opposition to that dictator, and right. you're not acting the fool, then that dictator probably will leave you pretty well alone. Wow. I'm going to tell you a little secret about this passage. I'm going to tell you a little secret. What Paul is really saying is, <coughs> keep your nose out of Politics. Amen. Uh huh. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's what Paul's really yeah. saying. Mm -hmm. Said, keep your nose out of politics. We're supposed to be ambassadors for Christ. We're supposed Amen. to have our citizenship in another country. We're just, well, I got news for you, honey. There ain't an ambassador I know from any nation anywhere in the world that votes in our elections. That's right. <laughs> Amen. 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 They're not citizens of this country. That's right. You say, Pastor, are you saying then that we ought not to vote? That's not what I'm saying at all. But I'm telling you, here's how I vote. Lord, who should I vote for? That's Mr. Right. Obama? Okay. That's right. Amen. Do I like him? Do I like his policies? Do I like what he's saying? Do I like what he says he wants to do? Doesn't matter. That's right. All I know is I'm supposed to do what God tells me to do. Amen. I'm supposed to follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. Right. If God wants somebody in office for this time and this hour, for whatever reason, then that's the man I want in as well. That's right. And I got Amen. news for you. Don't matter who I vote for, that's right. God's will will be done. Amen. That's right. That's God's right. will will be done. All right. Uh, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Mm -hmm. If you do this thing right, I've said this before. If the Christian church lived the way the Christian church ought to live, the world would love us. That's, That's right. right. That's Amen. Yeah. That's the right. government would love us. That's right. I've told you my vision and my, my vision for ministry, it's the same it's been for over 30 years. Yes, amen. I envision one day our church being set up and having all kinds of ministries and all kinds of things going on and having businesses that are helping to raise money to support the ministries because you can't, you know, eke it all out of people's wallets. Mm -hmm. The church can't afford to do everything that the church needs to do. We, we need to help people. We need to make sure church folk don't go hungry. We need to make sure church folk have a place to live. Mm -hmm. I'd love to have. Dallas is a big city. A lot of young people run, especially LGBT people, uh, run to big cities 
when their families put them out on the street and when uh, they come out and you know they have conflict within their families a lot of these kids come to the cities because they know there's community here. Of course, what they don't know is there are also opportunistic devils that are going to take advantage yes, of you. Yeah. And they're going to use you like a piece of dirt. And, you know, you've got to be careful. Yeah. Yeah. I would love for our church to one day have a safe haven. Yes. I would love for our church one day to have a home that is monitored and a home that is provided for runaways that come to Dallas and give them a place where they can be safe, give them a place where they don't have to turn to prostitution, give them a place where they don't have to turn to drugs, give them a place where they don't have to be in the bar rooms all the time, trying to find a place to sleep that night. That's right, amen. I'm going to tell you, you folks don't know. Let me tell you, I've been through some things in my life. I know what the process looks like. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people out there who they go into the bars and they look to pick up or be picked up, and it doesn't have a thing in the world to do with sex. It has to do with the fact that they have nowhere to sleep that night. And if they can get somebody to take them home, they at least can sleep on a bed somewhere. They at least can be warm instead of out on the street trying to sleep on a sidewalk. You may not like that reality, but that is a reality. Yeah, that's yes. right. Yeah. That's true. That's right. You've got these foolish people in the Christian community. Oh, homosexuals, they do all this, they do all that. You don't know half of the why. That's right. And if somebody loved them and cared enough about them to provide them an alternative, there wouldn't be near as many doing those things. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. A lot of our young people, it's anybody who knows anything about the, the transsexual, transgender community, they know that many people in the transgender, transsexual community wind up working in prostitution. Yeah. It's a simple reason for it. Nobody will hire them. They cannot get a job. I don't want that ugly thing. That looks like a man in a dress. I don't want that working in my store. I don't want that working in my office. I don't want that working in my warehouse. And these poor people cannot find work. So the only commodity they have that they can benefit from is their body. I know a lot of people, a lot of people. I lived in New York City for 10 years. I know a lot of transgender people that wound up working in prostitution. It is sickening. It is sad. And the church, the level of love that the church shows to people they don't understand yeah. is nil. That's right. Zero zilch. And these poor people have no option, or at least in their mind, they have no option. And they turn to this. I'm going to tell you something. If this pastor of this church has anything to say about it, then before this thing is over, we're going to have a place for people like this to come. I'll put you to work. I'll give you a job. I'll give you, you can work in our thrift shop. You can work in our bookstore. You can work in our coffee shop. We'll have somewhere where you can work. You follow what I'm saying? See, that's all part of my vision. And I'm going to tell you, if the church did things the way the church ought to do things, the world would love us. It's they would right. appreciate us. They might hate our religion, but they'll love our practices. That's right. You know, it's funny. I hear a lot of people railing against evangelical and especially fundamentalist, the far right wing folks. How many people you ever heard talk nasty about the Amish? Yeah, that's right. Really? <laughs> That's right. How many times have you heard anyone talk about how nasty and ungodly and unchristlike the Quakers are? Mm -hmm. That's right. I got news for you. This will shock some of these Christian folk out there who don't know nothing but think they know something. Quakers have been from the beginning open to and welcoming of gay lesbian people. They still are to this day. 
They have always maintained an attitude. If you want to know God and you want to live for God and you want to serve God, you're welcome in the church. Period. Case closed. End of story. That's how we believe. That's how we do it. Wow. <clears throat> how often do you hear Quakers railed against? How often do you hear the Amish railed against? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You see, people who do it right yeah. don't wind up on the bitter end of somebody's tongue. Yes, amen. It's the people that don't do it right who wind up being railed against. It's those people who be, wind up being spoken against. You know, we got fundamentalist folk in the church world today. Oh, bless God, they're coming against me because I'm standing up for the gospel. You ain't standing up for the gospel, you dicklehead. <laughs> you moron standing up for the gospel. Yeah. The gospel is Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. He came, he died, he rose again, he ascended on high, he's coming back. Which of those points are you being persecuted for? Yeah, that's right. Which of those things are you being persecuted against because of? Because you believe Jesus died? No. Because you believe Jesus rose from the grave? No. Because you believe Jesus is God manifest in the flesh? No. Well, then why are you being persecuted? Because I won't make a cake for a lesbian couple. No. Oh. Yeah. Sweetie, got news for you. That ain't the gospel. Amen. That's right. Amen. That ain't the gospel. You're not being persecuted for the gospel. That's right. I got further news for you. If you think God is going to stand at the gates of heaven and say, no, you're not allowed in because you made a cake for a lesbian couple, <laughs> you're an idiot. That's right. I'm going to tell you something. If every business on this planet, every Christian business person on this planet, if every one of them did business only with people who embrace the same moral position they embrace, they'd all be out of business. That's right. Mm -hmm. Every one of them. Mm -hmm. You got to do business. When you're doing business, you got to do business with people you like and people you don't like. That's right. People you agree with and people you don't agree with. Doing business is doing business. Don't have nothing in the universe to do with your moral position and your moral high ground. None of that means nothing to nobody but you. Amen. That's right. You think taking a position, I'm not making a cake for these women, bless God, hallelujah, glory to God, because I'm a sanctified, glorifying, <laughs> tongue talking, Jesus' name, holiness, Child of God, praise the Lord, hallelujah, glory to God. So they go to the next bakery you pee on and buy a cake there. You didn't stop the wedding. That's right. You didn't change the world. Amen. Good grief. I'm not going to act like I support it. Oh, but you'll make a cake for the guy who's marrying his 15th wife. Yeah, that's uh -huh. right. That's right. You don't have a problem with divorce and remarriage. Mm -hmm. That's a, oh, you mean uh, the issue that the Old Testament law, which you quote all the time concerning gay lesbian people, says is also an abomination. You don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Because after all, that's heterosexual abomination. <laughs> and God knows heterosexual abomination and homosexual abomination are very different things. Yeah. <laughs> foolish. <laughs> Rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good. What did Jesus say about the term good when the young man came to him and said, good master, what did he say? There is none good but God. There is none good but God. That's right. So when he says here, do that which is good, he is saying, do it God's way. All right. Praise the Lord. And thou shalt have praise of the saint. Verse 4. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. <laughs> for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger, to execute wrath upon him 
that doeth evil. Again, you know, the Word of God said that the last days that evil would be called good and good right. would be called evil. Yeah. And there are people in the church who just think, brother, they understand what that means. They just think they've got it down pat. Mm -hmm. Well, that's talking about morality. That's talking about behavior. That's talking about conduct. No, it's talking about doing it God's way or doing it contrary to God's way. That's God's right. way is called good. Right. Contrary to God's way is called called evil. You are calling yourself a Christian who doesn't act like a Christian is supposed to act. That is evil. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's evil. Yeah. Amen. That is evil. And you're calling it good. Uh-huh. My word have mercy. That's right. And the people who are trying to act right, you've labeled evil. That's right. Amen. The people who try to love everybody, the people who try to embrace everybody, the people who try to act like Christ acted, you call evil. Honey, I got news for you. If they're acting like Jesus acted and you're calling them evil. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Amen. Then you're calling their Lord evil. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Oh. If somebody's acting like Jesus acted, he sat down with publicans and sinners. That's right. Mm -hmm. He did. He sat at meals with publicans and sinners. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see people doing that and you call them evil. Yeah. Are you hearing me today? Amen. Got news for you, friend. Yeah. You're then saying that Jesus was evil. Mm -hmm. They're doing nothing more, nothing less than the master did. And yet you're labeling them evil for that conduct and that behavior. And he said, you know, there are, I, I keep saying it over and over again. There are a lot of Christian people in the world today. They bark and gripe, brother, because they wind up experiencing, you know, they wind up going to jail. They're dragged off to jail. Well, I was just standing up for the gospel. No, you weren't. Mm -hmm. No, you weren't. Abortion is not in the gospel. That's right. That's right. Gay pride parades are not in the gospel. Amen. Right. Nowhere in the gospel are you commanded to stand against anyone. That's right. That's right. Nowhere in the gospel are you told that you're supposed to condemn anyone, Amen. criticize anyone, Amen. judge anyone. Honey, Amen. it is not That's in the right. gospel. Amen. And what Paul is saying here is when you do stupid things and you wind up on the other side of the law, you done brought it on yourself. You deserve what you got. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, there are some stupid people in the church today, folks. Mm -hmm. They think they're going to get to heaven and God's going to have a trophy from the ground to the ceiling for them because they stood up for, quote, the gospel. Uh-huh. And the Lord's going to say, what gospel were you standing up for? <laughs> I don't, that's not the gospel for which I died. I don't know what gospel you're talking right. about. Amen. Yes, sir. Did I not say, as much as lies within you, live in peace with all men? Right. Didn't I say that? Uh -huh. You should have baked that cake and prayed for those people if you don't agree with the way they live and the way they do. Then they'd have had an anointed cake at their wedding. Amen. Amen. My Lord have mercy. Instead, you sat there and you acted the fool. Well, I got news for you. There's a couple in Wyoming or Oregon. I forget where it is now. I just saw it in the internet today. They refused. This Christian lady refused to bake a cake for a lesbian couple. Well, I got news for you. The laws in that state say that you cannot discriminate right. on religious basis right. in the process of doing business unless you are a religious organization. And the judge said, last time I looked, a bakery does not qualify as a religious organization. And these stupid people now have to pay the couple $150,000 for a cake they didn't want to bake. Hey, folk, you, 
If you believe the Bible, then you pay that $150,000 with a big smile on your face because that's just the price of being holy. <laughs> that's just the price of perfection, sweetie. Amen. That's just the price of being so godly and so righteous you don't know what to do with yourself. Yeah. I can't make a cake for them. That would be the same as me approving of what they're doing. Do you approve of a cake you bake for a mother who's unwed and they're throwing her a baby shower? Ooh, okay. Uh -huh. Do you approve of every circumstance? And every, do you screen every client that comes through your shop right. to make sure, because after all, what they do with the product they buy from you somehow has something to do with you. Right. Or are you just being picky about who you want to discriminate against? Because I've got news for you. If you're being picky about it, and you're not being consistent and across the board. You are not doing good. You are not doing things God's way. Amen. Right. Because God is all about equity. God is all about fairness. God is all about if you're going to do it that way with one, you're going to do it that way with all. Right. Don't think for one minute, honey, that you're deciding which thing you want to identify as sin and which thing you want to identify as great enough sin. To merit your taking a stand on it. Yeah, that's right. And that young couple comes in and they're getting married and they want a wedding cake. Do you ask them, is this your first marriage? That's right. Young lady, are you a virgin? Oh my God, yeah. Young man, are you a virgin? Because that's the way I believe. Yeah, that's right. That's the way I believe. Mm -hmm. Hello now. That's right. They come in, Brother Richard, they want a cake for a wedding, for a uh, baby shower. Is this baby being born to a mother who's married to the father? Hmm. Hello now. Uh -huh. See, don't you dare think that you can do things any old haphazard way you want to. Don't you dare think that you can stand against those you want to stand against and have no issue with everything. Because the Word of God said the minute you try to pull the law through the fence into the New Testament, you become obligated to the entire law. Right. So if you look at that lesbian couple, if you look at that gay couple, and you quote Leviticus, uh, uh, you just messed yourself up. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. You just messed yourself up, honey. Because now God has thrown grace out the door. That's right. Listen to me now. This is the word of God. This isn't this pastor's opinion. That's the word right. of God said that the law and grace cannot coexist. And, right. We've studied this earlier in this Bible study series. The law and grace cannot coexist. The minute you bring the law back into the picture, the minute you start quoting the law of Moses, God says, okay, fine. Then that is what you will be judged by, not, not grace. by grace. Amen. Mm -hmm. So now you become indebted to the entirety of the law. So the smartest thing you can do as a Christian is understand that the law was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. It is no longer binding upon the hearts and minds of God's people in the New Testament church today. And leave it well enough alone. Amen. That's the smartest thing to do. Amen. You know what? All you want me to do is bake a cake. You don't even have to tell me what you want on it. Mm -hmm. I'll put the flowers on it. I'll put, but you can write your own names. I don't care how you strike a compromise, but figure it out. Mm -hmm. yeah. For he is a minister of God to thee, meaning he represents God yes. for good. When you're doing things God's way, then the powers that be become representatives of God for you for good. But if thou do that which is evil, you do things contrary to the way God would have them to be done, be afraid. Those two words right there ought to strike fear into some people's hearts. Because you know something? God is not in the habit of saying be afraid. That's right. 
Every time an angel appears to somebody, the first words the angel says is, be not afraid. That's right, amen. But all of a sudden, we got the Apostle Paul saying, be afraid, be very afraid. <laughs> when? Why? Yeah. When you decide you want to do things contrary to the way God would have them done. That's right. Yeah. That's when you need to be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister, the representative of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. You do things contrary to the way God would have things to be done, and the powers that be have the power to bring wrath and condemnation down on your head. Be afraid. That's right. Oh, be afraid. Jesus. Verse 6, or I'm sorry, verse 5. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. So Paul says, don't just do things right because you're afraid of the repercussions of not doing things right. But do things right because your conscience will be clear knowing you've done the right thing. Uh -huh. I'm going to tell you something. I don't lose any sleep at night when I know I've done the right thing. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. The yes. only time I lose sleep is yeah. when I'm afraid I may have done the wrong thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know about you. Mm -hmm. I've had those days where I wasn't in a good mood. Maybe I hadn't eaten in several hours and I'm all upset. And, you know, and maybe I really read somebody, the riot act or something. And then I feel bad about it afterwards. You ever have one of those things, you know, you say something, say, well, Lord Jesus, I probably shouldn't have said that. Or you do something, say, Lord, I probably shouldn't have done that. So why do we strive to do the right thing? For conscience sake. Yeah. When you really try to live the life of love, when you really try to yeah. live the Christian life the way yeah. the Word of God teaches to live it, I'm going to tell you something. You can sleep at night because yes. your conscience is clear. And I'm going to tell you, if you bake a cake for those people and you show them nothing but love, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you a little secret, honey. Your conscience should be clear. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you should be able to sleep at night. Yeah, well, because you know that right, hello now, mm -hmm. right, doing things God's way, the good way, God's way, is living at peace with all men. That's right. Showing a, the light of God's life. Being an example of Christ. Living like Christ lived. I cannot for the life of me see Jesus saying, no, go bake your cake elsewhere. I can't see it. Can't even imagine it. Verse 6, for, the, for this, excuse me, yeah, for this cause, pay ye tribute also. For they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render, therefore, to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. So here Paul addresses that ever-present question of money. <laughs> he says, pay your taxes. Pay your taxes. You know why? Now, here's the funny part. Listen to me now. He said, you pay your taxes. Why? Because they're ministers. Am I telling the truth? Look at verse number 6. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers. Mm -hmm. Attending continually upon this very thing. The same reason you pay tithes is so that the pastor can attend continually to his ministry. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. And he doesn't have to divide his time between secular work and God's work. Mm -hmm. right. Paul says, for the same reason you pay your taxes. Because those that are in government are there so that they can do expressly that work. Right. Yep. And he says, for they are ministers. So guess what? In Paul saying what he's saying in this passage, he is endorsing the concept of ministers of the Gospels being paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? Yeah. Because he's comparing paying ministry to paying these men as ministers. 
-hmm. who are involved in government, who are involved in law, mm -hmm. who are involved in keeping order. Do you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right. So therefore, Christians cannot say, well, bless God, we don't believe in paying taxes. Mm -hmm. I know people call themselves Christians who try mm -hmm. to say that. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a little secret. I've been preaching this for over 30 years. I believe that churches being exempt from paying taxes is contrary to what Paul says right here. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. We're not a 501c3. I don't believe any church ought to be. Paul said, pay your taxes. Mm -hmm. You have an obligation to support these people so that they can do the work they do. Even though it's secular work, it's mm -hmm. still work that God has ordained. Mm -hmm. So you pay your taxes. Mm -hmm. I don't believe churches ought to be tax exempt. You know how many little storefront frauds would be shut down in a flat solid second mm -hmm. if churches paid their taxes? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know how many cults would never have been started in this country mm -hmm. if it weren't for the fact that churches are exempt from paying taxes? Mm -hmm. Half the time, people get online and grab a so-called ordination off of some website for $10 or $15 just so that they can avoid paying taxes. We go to Sam's, we buy our stuff at Sam's. They say, do you have a uh, tax exempt letter? I say, no ma'am, we pay our taxes. Charge us our taxes, we pay our taxes. Mm -hmm. You hear what I'm telling you today? Mm -hmm. And there are so many who have quote unquote gone into ministry strictly for the benefit of not paying taxes. That is in direct contradiction to the teaching of God's word. They call it separation of church and state. Paul does not call for the separation of church and state in terms of taxes. Mm -hmm. He does not say that believers, whether they be individual or corporate, are exempt from paying taxes. No, we are obligated. When taxes came due, the Lord sent Peter fishing. Oh, that's right. Yep, that's right. And he found the money necessary in the mouth of the fish, if I tell the truth, right. to pay the taxes. Yeah. But the taxes got paid. Amen. I'm going to tell you, folks, there is a reason in this country why the church is in so much trouble. There's a reason. We have done things and are doing things so contrary to the good way, to God's way, it's not even funny. Let me tell you something. The Constitution is not an addendum to the Word of God. Right. Amen. That's right. These people run around... You know, and they act like, brother, the Constitution is divinely inspired as was Scripture. Uh-uh. Mm, Not at all. That is a secular document. It is a secular, uh, it serves a secular purpose. Mm -hmm. And until these dinghies get that in their head and they understand how it works, you know, we got people that are wanting to, to uh, uh, interpret the Constitution by biblical so-called standards and what have you. No, 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 no. They serve very different purposes. They serve very different functions. I want to tell you, you need to pick today whether you want this country to be under some sort of Sharia law like the people in the Middle East, you know, when it comes to Islam. You want us to be under some sort of a Christian version of that or you want freedom. You cannot have it both ways. That's right. Amen. That's right. I got news for you. The principles of the Constitution of the United States of America are not altogether in total and full agreement with the Word of God. That's right. 
Amen. That's right. The Word of God tells us that we're to avoid at all costs idolatry and we're to abstain from anything idolatrous. Yet the Constitution says you have the freedom to worship any God you want to worship. You have the freedom to worship any way you want to worship and believe anything you want to believe. And the government shall not infringe upon that right. Am I telling the truth? Uh -huh. yeah. So you see, if we're going to get nitpicky about supposedly interpreting the Constitution according to Christian principles, well then, there ought to be no room in America for any religion but Christian. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. There's, there are truths about this country that I, I'll tell you. I'm almost done tonight because we're almost at the 9 o'clock hour. There are truths about this country that most poor people in the Christian church just don't want to face Jack. They will not face it. They will not deal with it. They don't want to be bothered. Mm -hmm. The father of our country, supposedly, George Washington, sworn into office wearing a mason's apron. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As were many mm -hmm. of the men who were part of the ceremony wearing their Masonic aprons. They considered it, brother, to be a Masonic ritual. They considered it to be a Masonic celebration. Mm -hmm. So far as they were concerned, they were establishing America upon a Masonic foundation, not upon a Christian foundation. Uh -huh. And if you think Freemasonry and Christianity are synonymous, you are out of your bloody mind. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. You are out of your mind. So all these people running around saying, oh, this country was built upon a Christian foundation. I've got news for you, my friend. Just because somebody uses the word God mm -hmm. does not mean they're referring to the God of Judaism or the God of Christianity. That's right. That's right. God is a generic word. It, right. it simply means the supreme one, the ultimate one. That's all it means, okay? So not everybody who uses the term God is speaking of the same deity. That's, That's right. right. I read an article earlier today written by a Muslim man. It was a, good article, a very good article. And he wrote this article and he talked to, you know, he said on several occasions, he said like, thank God this and blah, 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 blah. But he's not talking about Jesus. He's talking about Allah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he's using the word God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got people who read things written by our founding fathers. And because they use the word God, <laughs> these idiots want to believe that that the Founding Fathers were defaulting to the God of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. No, many of those men were Masonic. Do you know what one of the leaders of the Masonic uh, movement once said, and it is recorded? You can find it. I, I wish I could tell you exactly where, but uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but I've read it, I've seen it. He said, make no mistake, Freemasonry is Luciferan mm -hmm. in doctrine. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that means? Mm -hmm. That means Freemasonry believes that Lucifer is God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's who built this country. Yeah. We have Masonic symbols everywhere. You go to Washington, D.C., there is not one building that you will look at that does not have Freemasonry symbols all over it. Go to the capital of the United States of America. Do you see a cross atop the dome? No. You see a Roman goddess. Mm -hmm. Idolatry is a huge part of American history. But we got people who call themselves Christian. They don't want to face this fact. They don't want to face reality. They want to try to rewrite history so they can tell you that, oh, you know, this nation was built on a Christian foundation. Baloney! Baloney! That's right. It's garbage. You are walking in complete and total ignorance, haven't got a clue. 
Because if this country was built on a Christian foundation, we would not have gods and goddesses of Roman and Greek mythology all over our federal structures. That's right. That's right. But I'm here to tell you what is is because God wants it that way. That's right. This country ultimately is going to serve God's purpose, but I got news for you. What you think God's purpose is for this country and the actual purpose God has had for this country from the beginning, 200 plus years ago, may not even be anywhere near close. Mm -hmm. May not have anything. You, we got folk think they know the mind of God. Let me tell you, you've got to be pretty arrogant. Mm -hmm. And I will add pretty ignorant mm -hmm. to think for one second that you can know the mind of God. Right. Amen. Especially when, you, when you're looking across the, the span of time. You know, to think you know why God did this hundreds of years ago in preparation. Well, this is why God created America. This is why God... Um. <laughs> now we got people trying to tell us that, oh, America's spoken of in the Bible. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I've heard some stuff. <laughs> Folks, I'm here to tell you tonight, according to the writing of Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 7, the powers that be are ordained of God. Be they good, be they bad, be they evil, be they wicked, be they holy, be they righteous, they are ordained of God. They are there for a purpose. And it is not our job. I've said it from this pulpit preaching. We're not called to fight any battles on God's behalf. That's, That's right. right. Amen. Amen. Christians Amen. are as bad today as the Muslims. Yes. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. The fact that Muslims go in and destroy a building, bomb a building, and kill people because they printed a cartoon depicting Muhammad. You know what that tells me, Brother Richard? Tells me their God's a pretty weak God. Amen. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. That's what it yeah. tells me. Mm -hmm. When your God needs you to mete out revenge on His behalf, yeah. then your God is non-existent. Amen. That's right. Then you're serving an idol that has no power behind it. That's right. Because if we genuinely believed as we ought to believe, <laughs> We Christians would understand God is in control. God is working His purpose. God is working His plan. He is doing what He is doing. We do not need to fight any battles on God's behalf. That's right. We do not need to fight any, God, any battles on God's behalf. If anybody needs to do the fighting, my God said He will fight for me. Amen. Which is standing me this evening. Amen.